Today we're going to prepare a stick insect. This is uh, Diaspachia tamiris. It's an Asian stick insect. This is a captive raised one. It just died of old age. And it's got lovely wings, you can see. It has nice wings. So I'm going to show you how to prepare a specimen like this with the wings spread uh, to get a good result. What we use is a adjustable spreading board. This is insulation. Uh, foam, and then this is uh, styrofoam also for insulation. I'm using the white side here for today because the silver side tends to make the lens go dark. Uh, we use these as platforms to hold the wings. And the reason we do it this way is so we can adjust this space in the middle. We want to have the specimen's legs, some room for the legs. And this gives us a platform to move it around. So we can put the insect in the position roughly that I want it in so I can see how much room I need and then uh, have the platforms about like that and then we hold these platforms down just with a big pin and stick it right through to hold it in place I'll put one more here and we'll do the same on this side these are number nine pins <coughs> there. All right, but before we're ready to do this, we have to deal with the uh, gut contents. These stick bugs, the exoskeleton's fairly thin and soft, so if we just pin it, that tends to rot and shrivel up, which, you know, I don't really want to do that. I want it to look fairly natural uh, when we're done, so you can get the abdomen looking like it's supposed to. So I'm going to open it up along the bottom and pull the gut out. There's bound to be some eggs in there too, and uh, show you how to, how I'm going to prepare that. So I'm going to take uh, my little scissors. I've got some tiny little scissors here, and make a little cut uh, near the bottom, and then slice it up the length of the body, a distance. I'm trying to get it right down the middle here. I don't want to take too much of this, just enough to get, I think that's enough, just enough to get the gut out. I've got my little favorite uh, curved forceps. I should be able to reach in here and, yeah, and pull the gut out. There's definitely some eggs in here. And these eggs are still viable, so I will save these. Put them over here for now. This is kind of the gross part of it. Although, it's freshly dead, it doesn't really smell or anything. It's just kind of slimy and, and hideous. Okay. Quite a few eggs in there. I reach up into the body cavity here. and Usually the gut is a, it's a long tube, and if I can get a hold of it, I could dislodge it up by the head and just kind of pull, there it is, and pull the whole gut out. You can see it's kind of green. There were some leaves that it ate. These live about a year, and this one had uh, certainly lived out its life and died naturally. It, the wings are in good shape, though. Often, winged insects, if they live out their natural life, the wings are damaged, and this one's not, which made it a really good candidate for um, making a, a specimen out of it. Okay, that's good. Now, with these soft-bodied insects, I always find it helps to give them a quick soak in acetone. It seems to firm up the flexible, thin exoskeleton. It kind of stiffens it, and it kills off the bacteria and stuff that would make it rot more quickly. Um, so I'm going to give this a quick... Uh, acetone soak, and I'll show you how to do that. This is a metal uh, saucer that goes underneath a potted plant, and I'm going to use this to hold the acetone. Put the insect in here, and use my tweezers to hold the hole open a little bit. There we go. And then I've got some acetone. Uh, again, this is flammable and toxic, so you don't want to breathe a bunch of the fumes, and you want to keep it away from 
flames, of course. There we go. So I'm just going to pour a little bit right into the open body. And then I'm going to set this outside for a little while, uh, maybe like half an hour or something, or 20 minutes or something. Actually, I'm probably less than that. I can feel it stiffening up already. Yeah, I'll just set it outside for a few minutes. All right, now this has been soaking in acetone for, I don't know, about 10 minutes. And it seems to have stiffened it up nicely. And the wings are still able to spread. Dry those out a little bit. Acetone's amazing stuff. It certainly gives you good results with uh, preservation. Yeah, they're good. Now, I want to um, add some more stiffening to this abdomen. So I have uh, some regular stock standard pipe cleaners. And I'm going to insert this up through the insect's body and it will help hold the uh, abdomen to keep it from collapsing and also give it more strength and rigidity. So I'm going to push this in through my opening in the base and uh, I can feel that go through all the way up through the thorax right up here up into the neck. And See that makes it nice and rigid and uh, we'll cut this right about here. And I'll take my sturdier tweezers and bend the end of this a little bit up and like that and find the opening going back and then straighten it out there. I can pull the edges of this around the bottom. And that will fill out the abdomen and also uh, make it a little st stiffer and sturdier, so less likely to break. Okay. And let's see how that looks from the top. Pull the wings out. Oh yeah, that looks great. Uh, might need to straighten it slightly, but oh yeah, that should work really well. Okay, now we'll get our spreading board, <coughs> place a specimen in the center, and we're going to need to put a pin through this, but um, the pin should be able to fit past the uh, pipe cleaner. All right, I'm going to use a fairly big pin. I think this is like a number four or a number five. I want to place the pin um, through the thickest part of the thorax, through the center, but in a way that doesn't interfere with the wings. I think I'm going to go right in front of these um, small wings. You can see there's some smaller four wings here. See the little faultless four wings? So I'm going to put the pin right in front of that so as not to interfere with them. Yeah, it's nice and stiff there too. And I should be able to scoot right past the pipe cleaner. That looks good. Yeah, and it's coming out right through the bottom, right through the center. So, that's good. Push the pin through. And leave a little bit to grab. All right, now I can place the specimen in the center of this uh, space that I've made. And I want to get the pin in nice and straight. And I want the level to be where the wings can lie 
on this platform here so I can hold them in place. So I'm going to move these middle legs down a little bit so they're not in the way of the wing. Um, I'm going to use a couple of bracing pins to hold the insect so it doesn't spin around. And I pull the wings out. There we go. And I can pull the legs down to the position I want them to be. Like this. And the four legs up to the top. The antennas are nice on this too. They're not broken or anything. They're a good specimen. Okay, does it look like it's straight? Yeah. I'm going to put a couple more bracing pins here up to hold the upper part of the thorax up nice and level. And back here on the abdomen as well. I want it held up. Yeah. Shape it a little bit. Good. And then the legs, sort of pin them into position. position. Okay. It's funny, this right leg is slightly smaller than the left leg, which suggests that when this was a small nymph, the, um, the leg must have broken off and this one's grown back, which is always pretty amazing. Now I'm going to get a sheet of glassine, which is the paper we use to hold the wings down, and I need a sheet that's going to just hold the edge of this wing. It needs to be about that big. So I'll fold this and cut it. It's nice to have the glassine sheets the same size. This, the symmetry in all of this makes it a lot easier to see that everything's lined up properly. So I'm going to grab this wing and pull it out by the stiff edge of it. There it is. And hold it in place about where I want it. I think that looks pretty good. And I'll put the glassine over the top of the wing where it's on the spreading board and then I can use pins to brace it. I like to put the pins in at a little bit of an angle. Kind of helps to hold it tight. I oh, can't see it. There we go. Like that. Yeah. I think I'm going to push the body down slightly. Yeah, that's good. Now we'll pull the other wing up and try and get it into the same position. And in this case, we can just kind of eyeball it and make sure it looks like it's in the right spot. Put the glassine over it. Now let's have a look. Mm, it's a little bit high. You can see where the wing lines up down here too to help gauge whether it's at the right spot. Um, it looks pretty good. Let's see here. The tip of the wing is about to there. The tip of the wing is... That needs to come up a little bit. And you can always go back and adjust it if you need to. But I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with that. Make sure I get that nice and flat. Okay. Put some bracing pins in. Yeah. 
That looks pretty good. Needs to go this way slightly. Yeah, now we can just place the front legs where we want them. Get the tarsi straightened out there. And prop up the antennas. You can just make a little lift there. There we go. Oops. Yeah. Get this antenna up. Let's see. That's uh, pretty good. This one needs to go this way slightly. Yeah, and I'm going to brace the head a little bit too. Its head's kind of scooched down to one side. There we go. And again, I'm trying to get the position of what the animal looks like when it's alive. You know, they hold themselves, you know, erect and fairly symmetrical. You can really see how this leg is smaller than this leg. It might have lost that leg maybe in like its first or second instar when it was just a little tiny stick bug. But it's pretty good to be able to grow a leg back like that. It's a little bit smaller, but it's certainly functional. All right, you know, the whole thing looks pretty good. I'm gonna bring these four legs down just slightly so they're not sticking up quite so much. Help it fit into a box better. But, uh, yeah, a little adjustment there. And this is the same technique you would use for pinning a, a big grasshopper, uh, something like that with wings. So that you can have a place for the body and have the legs spread and have the wings flattened out. I know the small wing is a little out of place here. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay, we'll let that dry out. Probably take a couple of days. There's not much to them, so it should dry out pretty quickly. Now it's been about a week and the specimen has dried. Uh, one adjustment I made is that I repositioned the middle legs. I had them going back underneath the wings and uh, I decided right after I had finished pinning it that I might as well put them up forward and see them. It just makes it a little bit more interesting. Both of those positions would be uh, acceptable, I think natural for the specimen. So um, now we're going to pull uh, the pins. And now we can lift the specimen up. Oh yeah, it's really good. Yeah, very nice. Now we'll put a label on it. Now, I don't really have uh, accurate data on this. It's uh, raised in captivity, so uh, the only information I can put is Asia. It's an Asian species. Don't know what country it's from. Diaspachia tamiris is the species, and, and then uh, the female symbol, it's female. And then uh, I say ex ova, which means it was raised, hatched out of an egg and raised. And the year, 2016. Always important to have labels on everything. Whatever information you have. Put the label on the pen. There. Specimen done. And just for fun, I have a live one to show you. Uh, this species is interesting. It carries the egg here. There's like a forceps on the end of the abdomen and it holds the egg. 
has a pointed end and then a wider end. And this species actually punctures through a leaf and places the egg in that hole and releases it. It's just uh, an interesting uh, ovipositing behavior. And you can just pull the egg out. It's just holding it there. And you have this little egg. And I'll save those. Hatch them out. Now, the interesting thing about these is they will react. You can get the wings to come out. I'm just going to startle her by uh, giving her goose. There we go. Whoops. Okay, ready? Yeah. It's kind of a defense mechanism uh, to startle a predator. Yeah, they're lovely. I really like these. There, see? You just touch them and surprise them and they open up their wings. Now, I also have males. The males and females in these are often so different. I'll just open the wings and you can see them. There. See? It's the very same color and everything as the female.